So Insurgency Sandstorm has been out on console for a little bit and I thought I'd make a video about my thoughts on it. I was first introduced to this game by my friend Tyler who had a pretty high opinion of it and had known about it for a while, whereas I had only heard of the game here and there but I didn't really know much about it. So I was pretty hesitant at first to jump right in and purchase it immediately. I took a look at the game page trailer to see more of what the gameplay was like and it didn't look all that promising to me. The guns in their setups didn't look the best and half the time guys were just running iron sights, the other half they were just running cobra optics or shoddy eastern optics like the C79. The character customization they presented also pushed me away. The guy here is wearing a 90s style Paz GT helmet and has a zero protection mess chest rig. The gameplay footage they show had several red flags such as the footage appearing to be purposely stylized for cinematic purposes. Obviously you'd want to show the most exciting parts of your game when making a trailer but the POV and the movement seemed somewhat fake and the situations seemed somewhat scripted. The game also presents itself like a Michael Bay film with shit just blowing up left and right and you, the solo gunman, just fucking John Wicking terrorists with a pistol while half your squad is shot dead. If you're trying to sell a game as the ultimate tactical FPS coming to console, you'd probably want to show more coordinated and skilled gameplay between a squad of players that use communication and teamwork to complete an objective or mission effectively, but I digress. I looked at a different video explaining the gameplay, modes and customization in a little more in depth and I eventually came around to buying the game. I'll leave that video in the description. After putting about 20 plus hours into this game I can confidently say that this game has pulled an opposite Ubisoft, in which they've had a pretty shit trailer but the game in actuality is baller as fuck. You can run plate carriers in modern helmet setups. You can run present day mil spec loadouts, and the gameplay is actually a lot more tame and organized, especially if you have a squad that communicates properly. Hell, most of the time when you start giving callouts through the comms, people will unmute their mics and join in, and I've met some really cool people doing so. If the next objective is a demolitions one, I think I know where it is. I've got a launcher to complete the objective for us, yep. so just wait well. I can call an A10 right away on it, and if we're lucky, it'll hit it. Ah, uh, yeah, I've, I've done that on this map before, that's actually pretty fucking fun, yeah, go right for it. Yeah, beautiful. Commander, you're fucking nailing that roll, Jesus Christ, man. Thank you. So now that we've gotten the initial unpleasantness out of the way, I want to talk about a few things in this game that I think the Milsom community is going to love, especially if you're on console. I've tried pretty much most games in the tax shooter genre for console, but most of them have a few flaws that keep them down. You've got Modern Warfare with its current gen graphics, the way they design the weapons and the open-end combat, but it suffered majorly after the inclusion of Cold War, non-stop metas and the sweaty player base. You really need to have a higher skill trying to play normally with mil-spec guns because you're automatically at a disadvantage against some fuckhead rows with a Mac 10 that will 100% outgun you at range. We've got the Ghost Recon series, peaking at Wildlands for overall gameplay and story, as well as Breakpoint having more advanced features and more modern weapon and gear setups, but suffers from having a pretty mediocre story that I still haven't gotten around to completing even after having it for two years. There's a lot of bugs because it's a Ubisoft title and the guns have the same ballistics as an airsoft rifle. PUBG is pretty good, it does well at open end combat firefights and gunplay, but again you might be at a disadvantage because there's a level 500 god that's popping heads with a mark 14 and will have no effort taking your ass out. How the fuck have I not killed this guy yet? Could you please come pick me up? And probably my favourite as of late being DayZ, that I've gotten around to playing again recently. Less of the firefights with players, but more of the grinding to get the high-end military gear and base setup, especially with the recently added gas zones. But out of all of these games, none of them really match up to the feeling that Insurgency Sandstorm gives out to you. 
It beats them all in spades in the case of being a realistic but still fun tactical shooter. Something that I've been waiting for console for a long time. When you enter a match in Insurgency, you play as one of two factions, the Security or the Insurgents. There is no difference between these two when it comes to loadouts, it's pretty much all just appearance and voice lines, save for the commander abilities, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Now I'll mostly be reviewing co-op because it's more my style compared to the versus mode where you go against real people. In co-op you go against enemy AI, although they're not real people it does feel more realistic. And in every match you play, you'll be a part of an 8-man squad and able to choose from 8 different classes. I'll give a brief explanation on each of them. To keep things simple, each class is the same, it just depicts what weapon selection you have, save for these last two, I'll talk about that in a sec. Initially, you start off with Rifleman and Breacher, and unlock the rest through leveling up. Starting off, Rifleman is your general class, he gets a large list of assault rifles to use, such as the M16A4, the AKM, AK-74, the Org A3, and the M4A1. I recommend starting here if you're new to the game, even after you've started unlocking new classes, just to get a hold of everything. The Breacher uses shotguns and SMGs over assault rifles, such as the Remington M870, the MP5, MP7, and the Honey Badger. You get two of these per squad, but do keep in mind, however, that the Rifleman can still use an underbarrel shotgun like the Mass or the Master Key. The advisor gets to use special weapons like the Mark 18, the Scar H, and a modern AK. You can only have two advisors per squad and they get taken fast, so be quick if you want this one in a match. Demolitions has the same weapon selection as the Rifleman, but can run underbarrel GLAs and has a better selection of explosives, including remote C4 and various rocket launchers. You get one of these per squad. The Marksman has access to a smaller but more advanced selection of rifles such as the M24, the M110, the Mark 14, and the M82A1 Barrett 50 caliber, which can both two-shot a technical and dismember its unfortunate victims. Shout out to all of my Milsim sociopaths out there that just got an erection hearing that sentence. You can only have one Marksman per squad. The Gunner has access to a selection of LMGs such as the M249, the Pick AM, and the MG3 with limited attachments but a fuck ton more firepower. Again, one per squad. The Observer and Commander both get the same weapon selection as the Rifleman, but the big thing here however is the abilities. The Commander has a pair of binoculars that can designate fire and air support, and the Observer carries a radio to call in the Commander's request. The Observer and Commander need to be at least 10 meters close to each other to be able to designate fire support. If you don't have a mic or the Observer isn't sticking close, attempting to call support will activate a voice line and a text order for an Observer. You can have two observers per squad, but only one commander. As an observer, you don't have to manually do anything to call for fire support, you just have to be close to the commander and your in-game soldier will do the rest. This is observer. We need you to send Clara. Can you get them over here? Observer, this is station. Roger that. If you're playing as Commander, equip your binoculars and hold up on the D-pad or tap L1 and you'll be given a selection wheel of fire support to choose from. While playing security, call in a minigun chopper to passively eliminate targets. Order explosive artillery to hit a target area. Or cover an area with smoke to cover you and your squad's movement. You can mark an initial missile strike from an Apache before hovering and passively taking out enemy forces with explosive MG fire. And of course, designate an A-10 strafe. Mm. 
For the insurgents, you do get explosive and smoke mortars over artillery, but you also have access to chemical mortars, which can kill enemies and friendlies if they don't have a gas mask. Bomber drones fly overhead and drop a series of explosives on the chosen area. The explosive drone hovers over an area carrying a single bomb and can track and follow an enemy if they're out in the open. And the rocket barrage fires five sets of six rockets showing a very large area. The number and circle next to each ability is the amount of times you can call in that support type for that match and its cooldown status. Back to the loadouts, each class gets the same selection of pistols to use such as the Browning High Power, the P-22-6, the M-45 which is a special forces variant of the 1911, some form of Glock clone and a Desert Eagle. Also keep in mind that only a few of the pistols mount sight properly, most of them use those really weird rails that a lot of video games have for some reason. Each and every class consists of three parts, your class, your weapons, and your gear. We've talked about the first two, let's move on to gear, which is universal among all of the classes. Starting off, you've got the amount of ammo you want to carry. You can either have the base amount, which is three rifle mags and two pistol mags, an increased amount, or a heavy amount. Next, you've got the type of armor you want to wear. You can run a base chest rig, a plate carrier, or a heavy plate carrier. Finally, you can choose to carry a gas mask on you. The gas mask protects you from coughing or taking damage in gas or smoke, and you can equip it or take it off at any point in the game. The way loadouts are balanced in this is with this number. This is your gear score, and you get 20 points for each co-op loadout. You'll notice a number next to each weapon, attachment, explosive, or piece of kit, and that is its cost on your gear score, so it creates some interesting dynamics with how you design your loadout. You can save any loadout as a preset, and you get individual presets for each class, and for each faction, as well as individual presets for day classes and night classes. And since we've met the topic, it's time to talk about night matches. The night matches are the same as the day matches, with the same maps and the same objectives, just at night. Night vision in this is realistic, so any light source that isn't natural low light or IR is gonna fuck with you a bit. As security, you have access to panoramic and monocular night vision, while insurgents can use binocular and bimonocular night vision, both having the wider and narrower fields of view depending on the type you use. There is also the different tube types, like the classic green which I use, or white phosphor which is used by the military. There is also the amber tubes, but I don't personally like them because it looks like I slipped and smashed my face against the backboard of a urinal. You're also given access to a few devices that you can add to your weapon. You've got a normal flashlight, an IR flashlight, which is only visible to people with night vision, and an IR laser, again, only visible with night vision. You also get the option to use NVG point shooting, which is where you can the gun to the side. All of these attachments can be used for both primaries and secondaries. So this is where things differ from person to person. You've pretty much got three types of shooters in night matches. People that just use flashlights and no nods. This is the best for saving on gear points. Normal shooting with nods and IR flashlights. This makes using shooting with night vision much easier. And canted shooting with IR lasers, which is by far the most popular, I'm guessing mostly because of modern warfare. I personally run an IR flashlight, that way if an area or house is lacking low light I can switch on the infrared and get better visuals. I do occasionally run canted shooting with a laser and a Mark 18 for real operator shit, but the maps just have too many dark spots, even with nods for me to run it all the time. It's also what I would highly suggest a new player runs. The enemies in night maps usually run torches, so they're easy to identify, but if they see and aim up at you, you've got a bit of a problem. But just shoot at the center of the light, and if it goes out, you're good. 
If you're playing as security, you have to deal with Molotovs, and if you're playing as insurgents, you have to deal with flashbangs. Both are a major bitch to your long-term vision, which is why I suggest running a regular flashlight on your pistol, so if things get too bright with nods, you can flip them up and switch weapons. You also have access to NV scopes, but I usually leave them for a night marksman loadout, where I'll run the M110 with an IR laser and point shooting, and then flip up my nods to use the night scope where needed. Now it's time to talk about this game's AI. The way the developers coded the AI is pretty well done, not because the bots are extremely advanced or cutting edge, but because they're pretty balanced and they work decently well. A lot of the time the AI doesn't have the best aim or the fastest reaction speed, but they're deadly enough to keep you on edge. They use a variety of different weapons including LMGs for suppressing fire, as well as SVDs and bolt actions for more accurate fire. They can throw flashbangs, grenades and molotovs. They will assault in squads if your team is defending a point. They can maneuver and fire a technical, either solo or with more enemies. They can order fire support on your location, and they can hold defensive positions in buildings and urban environments, as well as patrolling roads or pathways. Having all that put together might sound like a lot, but because they're just a little bit slow with their reaction times and not the most accurate, the AI is pretty manageable, especially with a good squad. They're designed so that if your team is somewhat lacking, it's not too hard to take the lead or clutch up in a bad situation against the boss, and if you've got enough skill, you can clear a building or cap an objective by yourself. But do remember to stick to your squad as much as possible, things become a hundred times easier when you've got a whole squad to help you. Okay, so now lastly, I just want to list off a bunch of features that I personally love in this, that I think might be that little extra push for you to get this game if you're still a little hesitant. Leaning is manual, but you can activate a setting that leans automatically when you're facing a corner. If you're leaning while not moving, you'll be further out than if you are moving. It can be strange at first, but you get the hang of it. Turning on lasers and lights is very similar to Tarkov. Holding L1 to activate comms gives you a radio filter and initial beep to simulate actual radios. Bipods actually work in this, making sniping extremely satisfying. Holding square will show you your mags and their ammo count. You can tap square to tack reload and keep your mag, or double tap square to speed reload and ditch your mag. You can have a low profile gas block for the M4 rifles. Equipping a suppressor to the MP5s gives it the classic integrally suppressed barrel. Running a short grip like the loading or aiming foregrip will give you a nice C-clamp or a more comfortable looking hold, whereas the longer grips like the recoil and the vertical bipod give you a straight grip. The weapon customizing in this is absolutely amazing. You can run a full mil-spec loadout, or be an asshole and take the squad's only marksman role and then proceed to room clear with the CQB Barrett. You gain appearance currency in this by leveling up. You can use this to purchase camouflage for your uniform, a new uniform entirely like pants, tops, gloves, headgear, as well as face and eyewear. You can change the pattern of your plate carrier and backpack. And for those wondering, this game has pretty much all of the well-known camos like Woodland, Multicam, Choco, Digital, Cadpat, and a bunch of others. There is local play, meaning you can play on any map, day or night, as security or insurgents as any role with a friendly squad of AI, even while offline. I initially used this to get a hold of the game before joining online matches. And probably the best feature in this game is the range, where you're given an incredibly high amount of gear points so you can make and test any loadout, weapon or piece of gear. The only role is the range master, so all of the classes combined, giving you access to literally anything. You can even spawn enemy squads, yeah. vehicles, and even a helicopter. You can play the range at day or night as security or insurgents and is what helped me get a lot of the test footage That's for this video. Like, I don't know. Yum, M4. simp. Sniper.
Yeah. Oh seven. my oh, god, that's the shot that I was looking for. That's the shot I was looking for. Matches in local play are great, but the range is really where you can let your curiosity go wild in this game. And to be honest, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Consider leaving me a like if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, and maybe even subscribe if you want to see more. I've still got a bunch of stuff that I want to do with this game. Until next time, have a great day everyone.